Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and before I get going on, I remind everybody about Clinton Donnelly, he's at Crypto Tax Fixer. This guy can help you with your crypto taxes. He's got uh, audit protection, he's got two packages, audit defense membership, early warning, uh, early warning membership, so he can defend your crypto reporting during an IRS audit for, uh, no, at uh, no additional charge, regardless of which year we're audited. He also monitors your IRS accounts weekly to see if you have been flagged for an IRS audit. And you can get these uh, right here on his on his website. And that's uh, the website is CryptoTaxAudit.com, and I'll put it in the top of the description of this video. Now, today, my understanding is that today is going to be the Fed's decision on... Um, on raising interest rates and there's a lot of people that that think he's going to raise them a lot uh, there's a lot of people that jerome powell is he um a lot of people that think he's not but here's what i want what i wanted to show you this is from cnbc because the there's so many problems with not just the usa but the world right now and the core of the problem is that that the people running these countries they just lie to the people at will. And that is the same thing that you're gonna hear right here. Listen to what this woman that CNBC has on says about inflation. Lindsay, Subhadra laid it, laid it out very well. I mean, this is a situation that the Fed's in a box. They, they don't really have the tools to fix this. So what do you anticipate hearing from them? What's the right solution? What's the best that they can do with the tools they do have? What will we hear today? Well, the Fed's going to need to walk back market expectations, which have increased markedly to suggest a 75 basis point hike is coming. The Fed has been very clear that that is not something they're actively considering. And so they will have to reaffirm that rhetoric and convince the market that we are seeing improvements in inflation. And we are. Fed does expect inflation to continue to retreat going forward. Yes, the headline number surprised to the upside. But when we exclude food and energy, which, of course, consumers pay for, but monetary policy standpoint from a month did you hear what she just said exclude food and energy in other words that, that when you go to the grocery store and you're paying crazy amounts of money for food and you're going to the gas station you're paying crazy amounts of money for gas she said well that doesn't really count see because what they do is when they're when the numbers don't suit them they just change the definition of the numbers and they take out the things that are inflation like food and energy what what is more inflation than that and then they go on cnbc and they lie to you and tell you oh well yeah well technically those are you know you consumers out there you peasants out there yeah technically that that does cost you more money but it, from a monetary policy uh, position. In other words, since we've changed the definition, we've pulled out all the things that would make the inflation look what, like what it really is, which is horrible. We took those out. This would be the equivalent of back, you remember the president we had where he said, well, that depends on what the definition of is, is. And I remember when I was younger hearing that, and I was like, I remember that really being the time when I first thought to myself, what in the world has happened to our country now? Lies are truth and truth are lies. And we are living it now. And keep watching this video and you'll see. Okay. So, um, but by the way, the point of the inflation thing is, especially for you young people out there, all the collapse that you are seeing right now, whether it's crypto, on the front end, everything is going to go down. Okay. Crypto, stock market. I believe you're about to see real estate um, in my own town. We didn't have any for sale signs up for years around here. And I'm starting in my own neighborhood, I'm starting to see them pop up left and right. Real estate's next, in my opinion. Um, okay, I just wanted to show you this. I've told you a thousand times on this channel, it was never Bitcoin. Ex BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes warns Bitcoin and Ethereum on the brink of epic collapse. 
That is thumbnail words. <clears throat> Epic collapse. Okay? Now, let's move along. Now, this is BitBoy. Look at what he says. Wait until I explain the conversation I have been having with our Celsius network rep about collateralized loans. Jaws are going to be on the ground. As it turns out, we were wrong about them. Alex Mashinsky is going to go down in history as one of the biggest scammers in crypto. Folks, I didn't say it. He said it. Also, from Hugo Philly on a flare. This person says, what will happen to all the flare that is supposed to be airdropped to Celsius Network if they go belly up? I had a third of my airdrop headed there. Any thoughts? Flare Networks? Uh, da, da, da. Hugo Filion says, we would try to work with Celsius or the worst, or if the worst happened, their receivers to work something out. Can't promise anything. This is the risk inherent in centralized platforms. All right. Now, um, this was interesting because the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel caught it, and I caught it too, but I was waiting for someone else to say it. The price gap between the price gap between the lockup ether on Lido and spot ether jump to record highs as large holders sell their holdings, drawing concerns of potential ripple effect on crypto lending markets. Staked ether becomes focus of crypto stress. Well, it's only staked ether because Gary Gensler is not doing his job and going after Ethereum staked, in other words, interest bearing, which he said is a security. He's sitting on his hands and he's not doing anything about it. This is what I keep bringing up. Now, speaking of ripple effect, this is just a coincidence, right? Ripple effect. Now, this video I found yesterday, and the only reason I found it is because it popped up in my YouTube feed. And it was titled The Ripple Effect, and it's from February 23rd, 2021. I put out a couple of clips from it. The guy that's speaking is Joseph Hall, who's a partner with Davis Polk, okay? Very smart guy. Listen to it. I've already put out a few clips, but this clip to me is probably one of the better ones. I want you to see this. He's talking about the Ripple case. He says the mystery of what the SEC did here. See, he, he's scratching his head. He's trying to figure it out. And, and to me, that's the that's the mystery of what the SEC did here. Um, because if the SEC loses this case on the merits, um, I think they 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 they've sunk their regulatory project on 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 crypto assets. Um, you know, they, it, and and I I, I think they, they picked a very um, uh, very sympathetic defendant to go after here. You know. The Ripple Labs was not running, you know, a Silk Road type business. You know, they were not running. What a, if I? They were not running, they, and they were not running a frivolous business. Um, if you look at some of the early um, enforcement actions that the SEC brought in the ICO cases, they were frivolous businesses, and you just read them, and they were they're silly. Um, you know, they, it just you know, the Munchie Token or the you know. You know, just things that clearly people had just sort of dreamed up in order to kind of raise money uh, off, 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 off of, off of uh, investors. Um, and there was a mania going on. But Ripple Labs has a real business. You know, the, the interbank market, the interbank uh, money transfer market is a huge market. And they came up with a disruptive technology for that market. And, the, and Ripple Labs itself... Um, you know, I can't remember what its latest, you know, um, private valuation was, but it was a, you know, it was a big company. It was not some tiny little company somewhere. And, um, and, and that's before you even get to the, the investors who lost money, um, at, you know, in the wake of the SEC's action and the judge, you know, I've, I, I don't know anything about the judge other than, you know, what I, you know, I read her Wikipedia entry, you know, she was a, looked like she had been a, um, uh, you know, a, a New York. I'm not going to play the rest of it because I got so much to show you, but I just wanted to show you that Mark Phillips, who's a very smart guy, weighed in. I met him in Washington, D.C. Really nice guy, really smart guy. And the first comment he had on one of my other videos on with this guy, the SEC lawsuit against Ripple was not intended to delay adoption of RippleNet and XRP. It was intended to kill it by forcing this convertible virtual currency, FinCEN's words, to comply with securities laws. 
this would make XRP unusable. Why did Clayton essentially put a hit on XRP and why did Gensler continue the hit contract lawsuit? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whoa. Okay. Follow the money. Who profits if Ripple and XRP die? Straight up mafia tactics by SEC, but on behalf of whom? Ethgate. Time for an IG investigation. This has to have an investigation, folks, because that's what we're talking about. Now, this caught my attention too. Again, not my words, Max Kaiser's words. The DeFi, Luna, Terra, Cell, Ponzi schemes crack and more than one trillion is wiped out in a few days. Crooks like Mike Novogratz and Raul Paul, I think that's his name, go the way of Troy James. Sailor told everyone that hyperinflation was coming, the melting ice cube. If you got stuck, it's on you. I do believe that this, this is why, look folks, <coughs> this is why I keep telling you that I'm buying glint in my account and I'm buying physical gold because we don't know how fast this kind of stuff could happen real fast, real quick. And regardless of what that woman who was flat out not, not being honest in the beginning of this video, regardless of, of what she says, food and energy are inflation on you and me. Now, um, I saw this, an update. Again, this is another thing. This is Gary Gensler is not going after them. Remember this? Or this was a tweet from yesterday or whatever, or the other day. An update on ETH's drawdown from PAR and the subsequent impact on risk on Ave. Remember, Ave is lending. It, it used to be ETH Lend, and they changed the name. Same way Joseph Lubin changed the name of Ethereum 2.0. Go figure. Well, it reminded me when I saw this, remember the article from Rosalind Layton, it's time to end the SEC's clarity charade on crypto. Remember this section where it says, um, uh, why was Ethereum b blessed while its rival Ripple was sued? Why, was Coinbase, why does Coinbase get a Wells notice while crypto lenders like Aave built on the Ethereum flat platform get a pass? So this is all on Gary if this goes down, folks. Gary didn't do anything. Then, just by pure coincidence, you know how those coincidences are, Rosalind Layton puts out an article this morning. Judge Netburn may order the SEC to provide the inter internal documents on Hinman's infamous speech. This could expose the SEC's market deception and force a settlement. Forced settlement, folks. How about that? Force... Uh, force a settlement with Ripple. Now, I want to read a portion of this article to you. She's always great. Watch this. Transparency. This is the first time I remember anybody calling this fraud, folks, because that's what I think it is. I think this is mafia tactics fraud. This is this is about as corrupt as corrupt gets what's going on, going on here, okay? <clears throat> the SEC has fought transparency requests on the genesis of Hinman's speech relentlessly. The, rel the revelation of which could expose potential agency fraud. Innocent XRP holders lost $15 billion in value and entered the case as friends of the court against the agency. The crowdsourced documentation showing Hinman had multi-million dollar financial interest in a law firm promoting Ripple's competitor Ethereum. Hinman's speech could have been a revolutionary turning point for American innovation, but it became an unmitigated disaster. Not only did Hinman deceive the public and materially harm thousands of investors, he and his cohorts brought severe damage to the SEC's credibility and integrity. The SEC made a mockery of its mission to protect investors. However, um, regulatory scholars are not surprised. They've demonstrated. Anyway, no, folks, she has it right, right here. It was a bait and switch, okay? And we, we know it. We, and I, I highlighted that she said could expose fraud. But it was a bait and switch. And I want I want to pull this video, okay? Because I believe this video will haunt them, okay? It was a bait and switch. In other words, what they wanted to do is go into that, the, in secret meetings, they go into that room with Andrews and Horwitz and Union Square Ventures and all those law firms. One of the people that was in the room was Nancy Wotas of Cooley. And I've said it before. I think there were some people in that room that were acting in good faith. I think she was one of them. I think that, that there was an SEC plan and who the plan was with, we, we think we know, 
I won't name any names right now, but we're pretty sure we know where this plan leads, where this tr breadcrumb trail leads. They got in that room, had the secret meetings, and they were going to say, hey, they wanted everybody to believe that, hey, we've got this, we've created, because of the Hinman speech, this new decentralized, if you can become decentralized, but they don't tell you how, when, and who is going to tell you when you're decentralized enough. And that was the trap. That was the bait and switch. It was get Bitcoin and Ethereum through the door, slam the door, and then go after XRP. Remember, it was the day after they had the closed door meeting when Union Square Ventures, it was Brad Burnham from Union Square Ventures who gave the presentation because Nancy Wotas said he did. The very next day is when they initiated, um, when the SEC um, put XRP on their watch list because it was a freaking plan. And I don't think Nancy Wotas was aware of the plan because in this video, you will hear her. She came out of the meeting thinking, oh, okay, now we have this decentralized model for the industry. She comes out of the meeting and here's what she, a few months later, she's thinking. What's interesting is I don't think ether is decentralized. I think it's fully functional, but I don't think it's decentralized. But the chair, you know, the, Division director said it's decentralized. So, hey, look at the metrics for Ether. And hey, you do a little better than that, hey. Then why is it Ripple? Yeah, and I wonder if they, had, if they would have said that three years back. I mean, now they came back and said Ether is not, you know, it's not a security, but you know, it's now. How about three years back, would they have the oh, same answer? There's no question. Ether, or Ethereum violated the law in the SEC's view when it issued its tokens. Uh, he said that in the speech, even though like consensus says, oh, no, 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 that's not what he said. That's what he said. He said, but then he said, look, the securities law is really... She just has to understand that consensus is trying to create its own reality here. Truth is not really relevant. It doesn't add anything now because uh, Ether is decentralized. Again, not. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's a long process. All right. And what rolls right into that <clears throat> is John Deaton did his Hinman, um, was it fourth anniversary, 2018, 19, 2020? Yeah. Fourth anniversary of Hinman's um, speech was yesterday, and John Deaton did a live stream. I meant to get to it and, and could not. But listen, I'm going to play you some more clips of this in my next video, but watch this one. But there's this ethical legacy that is very active, that's lingering, that when Bill Hinman gave this speech, you all saw the chart, and you heard Jeremy Hogan say, scratch his head why did they gratuitously all of a sudden one day they'll never talk about a token they'll never talk about a specific platform but on june 14th 2018 bill hinman's going to get up on that stage and he's going to say bitcoin is not a security eth is not a security and talk about these things and then never address another token thereafter why because from that moment, you scratched your head, like why Why are they singling out Ether? It had an ICO, he said, well, forget the fundraising, but how's it apply to any other token? And we never got answers. And so people started asking questions, people started looking into these potential personal conflicts. And it's fair to say that in this case, there are what I have called massive conflicts of interest and gross appearances of impropriety. We're going to talk here in a minute, but I want everyone to take a look at this email from the person in charge of the ethics office at the SEC to Bill Hinman. This is courtesy of my next guest, Jason Foster of Empower, but read it. Right. It lets him know you have a bar under the criminal financial conflict. You are not allowed to even talk to Simpson Thatcher. And what did Bill Hinman do? He met with them three more times that we've documented from after receiving this stern warning that he could be in violation of the criminal conflict laws of the United States. Boom. I would hate to be uh, on the bad end of John Deaton because this guy's on fire. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family 
that if I was in interviewing anybody, if I was Ripple's attorneys, if I was John Deaton, if I were any of these guy, any of these guys on the good guy side, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be getting Nancy Wotas on the record because I think that she is the one that knows where all the bodies are buried and is the good guy in this thing or the good girl or good lady in this thing. <clears throat> Nancy Wotas, I'm telling you, that that woman right there is is a straightforward, straight shooter, and she was there, and she knows what these people have done. That's who I'd be talking to. Thanks for listening.